Okay. So today's talk is about contribution to TensorFlow. First of all, about me. I'm currently a graduate student at Simon Fraser University, and I develop computer vision algorithms for low power processing units. I come from a background in electronics and communication, but I later switched to computer science for sheer interest. I'm also an organizer for a women in machine learning workshop, which is being co-hosted with NewDip 2019. It is one week from now. It's happening in Vancouver. I'm also an organizer for women in computer vision workshop, which will be co-hosted with CVPR, which is the, one of the premier computer vision conferences. It will be hosted in Seattle next year. I also organize developer community meetups in Vancouver. As an individual, I personally feel that the code should be reproducible for usage. My story, how I entered into open source. It all started when I was organizing an event around International Women's Day, when I was looking for women speakers to speak on open source. I sent out these emails to a few people who I knew. There were two or three great ladies who were willing to speak, but unfortunately, it wasn't, it, we weren't able to make it out. Some were out of town, some had prior engagements, and few of them weren't willing to come out and speak on stage. But then there was one email which made me really upset. I don't have the email snapshot, but I have the snapshot of the conversation I had on Slack. I'll give a moment to read. It was already hard finding some lady to speak on open source, and there were people who were personally not motivated in already such a rare field. In my hunt for speakers, I reached out to someone on Twitter. From his profile, he seemed to be based out of Vancouver, and he was apparently an open source contributor, and he had a pretty big Twitter following. It was a shot in the dark, but I thought maybe he could help. And it helped. He sh gave a shout out on his social media, looking uh, that I am looking for speakers and is somebody willing. And I did find somebody. And this was the conversation I had with him. I'll give a moment to read. At that moment, I was really wishing there were more people, especially women, who could speak about their job, their contributions in open source. And it was re because it was really hard to find one. But why did I start with TensorFlow? Well, it is uh, one of the largest open source repository uh, projects out there, and with thousands of contributions uh, happening on a daily basis. One day, my pull request was merged. And this was when I felt that I am making my own journey. For me, TensorFlow as a choice was pretty simple. I work with it. And I was comfortable with the language. Reasons for choice for you can be pretty simple. You don't have to start with TensorFlow. You can start with any project you are comfortable with, language you are comfortable with. My daily life revolves around them frameworks and languages, and eventually I will move on to other platforms, but I had to start somewhere, and I chose TensorFlow. How TensorFlow came into being? It all started in late 2015 when Google open sourced its uh, project, and it was requesting people and asking them to come on board and start making contributions to make it more community-driven. What is TensorFlow? I'm talking a lot about TensorFlow, but what is it actually? It is nothing just another open source library for numerical computation and large screen, large scale machine learning. It bundles together a slew of machine learning and deep learning, our neural networks models, and makes them useful by a way of common metaphor. It uses Python, and which provides a convenient front end API, and it uses C++ to implement those applications in high performance. This was all about what is TensorFlow, how I started. How can you start? It is the easiest part. 
you have to first find where is tensorflow out there on github you these are few pin repositories but they are not the only one there are many other projects in the tensorflow ecosystem beyond tensorflow core which you can explore but for today let's focus on them if you have never contributed to tensorflow before or if you have never contributed at all the first start is to make yourself comfortable start with gitter chat rooms or other chat rooms that are available out there for different platforms for tensorflow we have gitter chat rooms the tensorflow chat room is where i am mostly in there are various other rooms which you can explore it is a good place to ask questions and have some conversation for example on the picture on the left it is billy lamberta one of the maintainers of the tensorflow just chatting with some contributor trying to resolve an issue but on the right hand side there are two contributors trying to resolve an issue among themselves it is a good place to develop relations it was a fun moment where people were somebody was hoping that there were emojis on gitter to make it and threads on gitter to make it more uh, friendlier again did every contributor jump right into the giant code base of tensorflow to start with let's check out some of the contributions somebody merely fixed the typos and some conflicting instructions for example there was somewhere where instructions said that the build version should be 0.3 but the link provided was for 0.24 and there were other uh, there were other typos like raspbian which should have been raspbian etc this is not too difficult to start with but it is just about observing and going to the, the documentation and looking where can be a possible error you need not be an expert to understand it it just observation skills second translations english is not the first language of many people out there in different countries there are people all across working for translations here somebody is working on translating some of the documentation code bases and notebooks and converting them into japanese it again isn't very difficult but they're making a relevant contribution for the people in their own community how many people here have contributed to open source before with a raise of hands how many of you have never done at all and have a raise of hands then this will be useful This is what a typical workflow for a first pull request looks like. Don't worry about a lot of boxes. We'll go through them one by one and actually see what is the process. Especially useful some for someone who has never done it before. And if we have done it, you know the process. Let's start. The first process is finding an issue. It can be an issue which someone else has raised. or maybe you found an issue and you want to propose a fix something like this from tensorflow there was a research paper which somebody was reading and was also reading the tensorflow implementation and realized there is a symbolic mistake the equation of somewhere in the implementation was wrong and he was hoping it could be fixed now once we know the issue the second most important part is verifying if the issue is right if it were you it would be ideal to find the research paper and verify is this issue relevant if this issue is relevant comment on the same thread that you are willing to work on this issue if somebody is not already working to avoid any potential conflicts next so if you have the issue now you need to start working on making your contribution fork the repository go to tensorflow go to the fork option and fork it on your own github repository next create a new branch this is highly recommended to avoid any potential conflicts in future for example what what if you want to go back to your original version and your current version is not something you would like to potentially merge with tensorflow main repository once you have created a new branch clone the repo on your local system on the top right hand side you can find a url just copy it open your terminal git clone 
paste the URL. That's all it takes for you to have that particular forked repository in your local system. Now you have the, the repo in your local system. You know the issue, but, in you, but you need to know where is the location of the file where you are intending to make a fix. Find out that location. There are two ways. Sometimes the maintainers themselves comment on the threads and say, would you like to make a PR request? Here is the location for the code base you're looking for. If not, you can feel free to explore. It, it wouldn't be too difficult. There is usually a search option on the TensorFlow main website and you can actually find it. Now we know the location. We need to go to this particular location in our code. So in our fold repo, we just have to go to the same particular location. Let's check out, let's just verify. It was TensorFlow, core, kernels, random binomials, and we're here. Now, once we have located the file which needs fixing, we need to open the file. Edit the file using your favorite text editor. I use here Visual Studio Code. If you use Vim, feel free to use Vim. There was a slight error. You can always find out where the error was, make the change, save the file, save, commit, and push. Once you have saved the file, go to your terminal, get commit, and write a reasonable message. For example, a reasonable message could be, which issue are you fixing? For example, fix this issue number and write the issue number and get pushed to your repo. Now, once you've pushed it and you go back to your GitHub repo, you will see something like this. It will ask you to create a pull request because it has observed some change. Click on this link and you will be able to file your pull request. Write a reasonable title, for example, fixes issue number. The issue numbers are usually in the uh, issue that was raised. If you go quick back, you can see at the top it was written 34398. We know this is the issue number, and while filing our pull request, we can just say fixes issue number 34398. Why? It is easier for maintainers to find out what are you trying to fix. Write a reasonable description. You fix the TensorFlow implementation from the paper. It's, it's, it supports Markdown, so you can always link the paper. And it would be more clear if you can actually tell them where is the, look, where is the uh, equation located. It was on page number seven. Now go back to where the issue was being discussed. Because you have just created a pull request, you will see your pull request being referenced. That yes, you created a pull request right now. And on the same thread, now comment, it appears you're correct or anything that you find. I have raised a pull request, which can be found here. If you do not want, you do not write where it is found, but you can always uh, look up. If you know some particular reviewer, tag them to expedite the process. Here, Billy Lamberta was tagged so that he could quickly look over the issue. And if it appears right, this pull request can be merged. Now, once the reviewers look at your pull request and it appears to be solving that particular issue, your, re your request, your pull request will be merged. It, the process isn't too difficult, but for someone who has never done it before, it can, it can sound a bit overwhelming because maybe they didn't know this single process altogether. How, this is a, uh, this is a, a process of contribution, but what makes TensorFlow unique in terms of contribution? You can also edit in Colab. You need not do everything via terminal. For example, if you find some place in the documentation where code is provided and they have linked the Colab file, instead of locating the file and opening in terminal, just open the run in Colab. Make the changes in the Google Colab. If you, uh, if someone here has not heard of Google Colab, it is one of the online uh, Jupyter notebooks uh, facility provided by Google Research. It supports Markdown. You can do uh, coding on the server. 
once you've made the change, save a copy on GitHub. You can change your branch. Write your commit message then and there itself. Once you do this, it is the same process again. As soon as you save, you can go back to your forward repo. It will show you the pull request option and the same, same old process. Create a pull request, write a reasonable message, tell the uh, reviewers that you have sent a pull request. And if it, is, if it is fixing an issue, it will be merged. But what if you do not want to uh, start fixing issues in the first place? Your first contribution need not be a pull request. You can raise an issue. Somebody may benefit from your query. Support answers by upvoting them because it gives more visibility to the answers which are better than the others. And if you're not sure that your opinion, your solution is going to fix an issue, post links to relevant forums or discussion threads which may help an existing issue. Maybe someone else can open that one of those links and actually solve the issue. But this was all about how to start. But it is possible some of you present here are aware of TensorFlow and would want to know is TensorFlow code base and its associated documentation convenient and easy to understand? TensorFlow 2.0 was a result of this need. It is more standardized and convenient and relatively easier to work with than older versions. This means more avenues for documentation fixing code reviews and technical stability fixes. Let's see how Tensor 2.0 actually has improved. What's new in Tensor 2.0? Keras is now integrated as a core part of TensorFlow API. It is a recommended high level API. So for instance, you need not write import Keras as Keras. You can directly say import TensorFlow as TF from TensorFlow import Keras. We no longer need sessions. For people who are not aware, session was initially used in previous versions to instantiate variables and actually use those variables and declaring the values. It looks something like on the left hand side. TensorFlow 2.0, for similar example, looks on the right hand side. It's more Python like. You don't have to get into the hassle of session.run. The ecosystem. TensorFlow is now more than just TensorFlow core. There are a lot of other parts of TensorFlow which you can actually contribute to. There's something called TensorFlow probability. It is a library for probabilistic reasoning and you can actually contribute to it. You need not go into the core part of TensorFlow. Compatibility. Since version one, there were things like save, if you had to save a model, there were various ways of saving a model if you were using, for example, different languages. Since, since uh, 2.0, this has become standardized all across. If you're using Python, you're using Android, you're using on cloud, JS, anything. There's a standardized way of using a lot of things and it has avoid duplications. Eager executions are not default. This can sound a bit tricky term. But eager execution is nothing but an approach in TensorFlow that allows you to build models from scratch. It allows you to build prototypes without the hassle of graphical approach that was present in the uh, conventional TensorFlow. Now, while it is pretty straightforward to work with eager executions, it is low level. It is recommended if you're a student or a researcher, and if you want to understand the mathematical stuff that is going behind the deep learning. But if not, stick with high level APIs. Keras is a good place to start with. In 2.0, Contrib is gone. Projects are more independent, but they're still part of the ecosystem. One uh, additional thing is, uh, I heard in one of the contributor summit, we, uh, contributor summit of TensorFlow 2.0, to the best of my memory, they are no more receiving requests for small minor spelling errors. They are moving, uh, they're moving in a more, uh, they're moving ahead with higher fixes, which may be, for example, security issues, vulnerability issues, code changes, uh, errors like uh, version errors, link errors. 
open source is all about community. If you, somebody here has contributed to TensorFlow before, version 2.0 came some, something because of you. It improves the solution as a whole because everybody in the, in the community can benefit from it. it. It also means you get full visibility of the code base and is often much more secure because it is thoroughly reviewed and vetted by the community. If you have never contributed before, it's always a good place to start sometime. Make your own unique story. This was my story. The same guy who actually asked me to speak, I told him I'm actually speaking. But this was all about me what, and what others have done. How can you start? Let me give you a few issues which you can work on right now after you go from here. For beginners, the left issue was not there a week before. And so apparently somebody was playing around and something has changed. That particular link on the top left side is no more working. It leads to a 404 error. If you will go on that particular link, you will realize in the URL, it's not a very big issue to work around. It's just URL issue. Somebody had added something has been prefixed to a correct URL. It will be very easy to work around. For advanced work, for advanced, for people who are more familiar with TensorFlow, somebody is asking a question about tensor boards. Again, this problem, solution is actually available out there on Stack Overflow and other community forums. If somebody actually wants to solve this issue, you can actually go uh, from here and actually file a pull request for this. Before I end up, As a community, we'll need your help. If you contribute, this is not a personal project, it is a community-driven initiative from Vancouver, and I recently became a maintainer. So if you contribute to open source, or if your organization is involved with open source, or if it's something you're proud of, we request pull requests for this project. It, it is not just for Vancouver, it is for Montreal, Toronto, and many others. Uh, I, and when I came across this, I, because of my own experience, I thought it'd be good to actually create uh, one single page where we can actually look for people who are working in open source and maybe actually reach out to them if there are people interested in actually contributing. That's all from my end. Thank you. Time for one or two questions. Yes, please. Uh, pardon again. Uh -huh. Oh, so are you asking if there's a video available out there? I don't know. Uh, so is a question, uh, so do you mean are data sets available out there or is the video available out there? Uh -huh, uh -huh. To, to download the data sets? Yeah. yeah, so I to the best of my memory, if uh, it's suppo if you have uh, zip files or tar files, there is an instruction. I don't remember the exact instructions. I remember this was an issue recently raised on TensorFlow also. Uh, there's a command given if you just, uh, I don't recall that command right now, but if it's a zip file or tar file, it can actually uh, unzip all the, any data set that you're trying to load into your TensorFlow. It's not a very uh, complicated process. If I do mess my memory. The structured data. Uh, so in TensorFlow 2.0, it has, uh, there are other structured data that have been brought into, for, for example, images and text are also unstructured data. Uh, I don't have the link right now. I should have put. But if you go on TensorFlow website, or if, in fact, if you just search TensorFlow 2.0 structured and unstructured data examples, it leads you to a website. It leads you the link on the website where they have examples and examples given out there how you can actually use them. It is available on the website. Thank you. Any question, please? Yes, please. Open source city. So uh, the purpose is to create um, one place, one platform 
where we can have a list of people, projects, and companies who are involved with open source. For inst for example, if if I had to find out how many projects, open source projects, are available out there in Vancouver, which people are working on, you might have to Google hard to actually find them out. If there's one single platform, we may actually be able to look them up on the single page and maybe even reach out to the people if you need to. Great, okay, thank you very much. Thank you.